Mixers and group games are a stable part of a lot of clubs and organizations as a way to form a bond amongst its participants, to have everyone loosen up, and also to help everyone interact with someone they don't naturally gravitate towards. It also gives everyone something fun and new to look forward to each time the group meets. In this video, I'll provide you with some of my favorite resources for finding mixers and games for your group, give you suggestions on how to successfully implement mixers and games, and give you some solutions to common problems that occur when leading mixers and games. Hi there, I'm Bethany Baldwin. I am owner and creator of Music Art and Drama Mad Society, its curriculum and coaching website that is providing a sports team for creative people. Mixers and drama games are a part of every meeting that my club has, and I'm hoping that this video will help you learn from what I've already experienced so you can be a much better group game leader much sooner than I was. So please share this video with anyone you know that regularly provides group games, especially your youth group leaders. There are plenty of resources online for you to be able to find mixers and games for your organization that come with little to no prep work required. You'll want to search for them by using phrases like icebreakers, get to know you games, group activities, group games, youth group games, team building activities, and of course, mixers. It can also help to type in the age category of the people you are providing the group games for, like small children or teenagers or adults or coworkers. Here are some of my favorite resources for finding group games. And sometimes if I want to level up the drama game or maybe provide an amazing party, I will go to my bucket list book to find some inspiration. I would love to get some new resources. So if there's anything that you use that you would recommend, please add a comment below this video so that I can benefit from your wisdom. Mixers can be led by anyone, by the leaders, by the helpers, the volunteers, the parents, the students. So it's a perfect thing to be able to outsource. When it comes to allowing students to lead a mixer or a game, I view it as a leadership opportunity. Or sometimes I notice one student who is sort of off on the fringes of the activities, maybe looking sad or uninterested. So I might ask that student to lead the mixer for that day or next week's mixer so they can feel valued and seen. If a student or a volunteer has an idea for a mixer, make sure that you have them run it past you first. Don't let someone provide something on the fly because you don't know if it's going to fit the goals of your organization. It's best to do any kind of game before you might have teachers teaching time or practice time. This way you get everyone's energy out and then have social or free time following your teaching time. Here's a hint. It's okay to reuse games, especially ones that your group loves. Here are some solutions for common problems when you lead a mixer or a game. Maybe you don't have time to prepare a game or the person in charge forgets. Most groups have a favorite activity. Keep that in your back pocket, have it written down somewhere. That way, if someone forgets or you forget or you don't have time to prepare a mixer, you can always have that go-to mixer that everybody loves and is always a favorite. I remember as a kid, uh, when we used to go to our Wednesday night club program, they would always resort to dodgeball and no one was disappointed when the girls and the boys did dodgeball. Hurt feelings. For a lot of mixers and games, you'll have to divide everybody up into teams, and this can be tricky. When doing an athletic game, the teams need to be an equal division of skill level. So have each person pick a partner. They usually pick someone their age and gender, then have each pair pick one person to be the number one and the other person to be the number two. Then make a team with all the number ones and a team with all the number twos. So each pair gets divided. For times when you need to make more than two teams, count off as you go around the room, giving each person a number, and all the people with the same number are on a team together. Or you could have them line up in some sort of order, like maybe by age, and have them count down the row, and all the people with the same number are on the same team. If you have time, you can select groups before the meeting based on a goal you might have. And you'll definitely have to do this if you have some sort of awkward social dynamics or some interpersonal issues going on in your group. You might need to pick the groups before your meeting, unfortunately. It's okay to let them just pick a partner from time to time, but don't make that a habit. Or have people pick a partner that they don't know very well on purpose. No schoolyard picks ever. If you don't understand what I mean by a schoolyard pick, look it up. Embarrassing incidents. 
Unfortunately, sometimes people get embarrassed in front of a group and you as the leader need to jump in and be the scapegoat in that situation. So pay attention to when that happens and be big enough to take the heat. Divert the attention to yourself by becoming part of the game somehow or moving the group's attention to the next activity. It's okay if everyone understands what you're trying to do in this situation. The most important thing is to give the student who is being embarrassed a, a way out. What if the fun gets out of control? You need to pick a way that you're going to get your group quiet and use it consistently so they understand that when you use this method, you mean business. Maybe try holding your hands up with a peace sign or coming up with some sort of call and response saying that they repeat that is funny that they know means it's time to be quiet. For example, you might say macaroni and cheese and they all respond with everybody freeze or maybe do what I did and invest in a good whistle. Let me get my whistle. Oh, thank you for being a leader. I hope everyone in your group regularly takes the time to show you their appreciation for being a leader. Thank you for watching these videos because it means you're invested in them. I appreciate you. Check out my video on fundraisers for your club or maybe my coaching video sample for my drama club curriculum here.